Hey, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. It's me, Daniel. I'm happy that you're here today. You have read the title. Today, the magic is going to happen in test automation because I would like to present you a really cool new tool that I just found out on the internet. So the tool is called Magic Inspector. And before we jump into Magic Inspector, I am always talking about the importance of the tool selection. So if you are on the lookout on a tool or of a tool, pick not the most hyped tool on the market right now, pick the one that fits your need. Check what is really important for you. What are your goals? Who's going to use the tool and so forth and so forth. Because I usually, you know it, if you follow me and see my videos, I use the me metaphor of a drilling machine. If I would like to drill a hole in my wall at home, I get to my toolbox, get the drilling machine out and drill the hole. I don't have to assemble and to configure the machine. Kind of a bit, I need to get a new driller in, but that's really easy. And the same thing should be the, with test automation tools, right? So you don't want to install the tool in a long running process. You don't want to configure it. You just want to get the tool out of the box of course, adjust it a bit to your needs and then you're good to go. However, there are really cool products on the market already which you install or which are an online web SaaS product that you can just sign up for and use. And the same thing then if you decide for going with a really easy tool is who is going to use the product? Is it really an, an engineer, a test engineer or a developer? Or is it more like non-technical people using the tool? And then no code or low code tools would be the right choice for you. And as I mentioned already in the introduction, I'm going to talk about the Magic Inspector tool today. Let's jump right into magicinspector.com and let's see what they are offering. So as you can see on the screen, Magic Inspector has the claim automate testing in natural language. And that's the really cool thing automating with our natural language. So you can build reliable, non-breaking non -breaking automated checks without any technical knowledge. And that's the real cool part, yeah? So if you scroll down the page, you already get an idea how Magic Inspector is working. You can play the video, you get a very first impression on how the tool is working. In my demo, I will show you the difference between the AI and the non-AI functionality that you have. And as you can see, you have lots of additional things that you can go through, right? But you can read everything on your own if you go to magicinspector.com or you click the first link down below in the video description. And yeah, without further talking, let's jump right into magicinspector.com demo. So. I already signed up for the trial version of the product. You can do the same thing. As I say, said, go down in the video description to get the first link and then you can play around with it. The only thing that you have to do is you have to answer one or two questions like what's your name, what's your organization, uh, what's your title and what, how do you would like to call your workspace? And that's basically it. So the installation, installation takes about 20 seconds. And then you're coming to that interface basically. And as you can see here on the left hand side, you have the navigation structure. You can see all the tests, all the suits, all the run history, all the variables, alleging in teams. We come to that at the end of the video again. And then on the right hand side, you basically have the main interface. So you have to create a new test section, which we do in a second. And you have the overview of the test that you just executed or created. I cleaned up a bit before, so I don't want to mess around with a few. So let's assume we would like to go shopping. As you can see, I did something similar already and I use my demo project, which is my drilling machine or hammer shop. So that's the thing. You give the test name a name, you start with the URL and you hit create test. And then this interface is coming up. Yeah. So as you can see, Magic Inspector is showing up the very first step which is basically putting the URL on top. And then it says you have different, like, then you can define the next step. You can say, okay, you have a click action. You can fill an input. You can set a checkbox, drop down, wait for delay, use the keyboard. Oops, you have AI content extraction. You can choose also a file. You have the AI visual assertion, URL assertion, and even more functionality. 
If we took a look at the one more second on the right hand side, down below you get locks, if locks are available, and you also get the recording. So every, every step that has been taken by Magic Inspector is being screenshotted or is the recording in place as well. So let's do some um, some some tests over here. So let's say we open up uh, this this web page and we would like to click on the login button. But before I go and explain a little bit over here. So if you would like to do something, so let's assume we click, we want to click an element, you have the different options. As you can see on the screen, you have this little tiny robot. And this robot says, if you hover on it, you put the mouse on it, it says AI is enabled. So when AI is enabled, you can choose between the following two models, the DOM model or the AI vision model. And that's the thing that you have to know. The DOM model is also being used in Magic Inspector. And that's the default option. So in 80 to 90% of the cases, the DOM model is completely fine for you to choose in order to yeah, navigate through your web page, navigate to your product and test it. And then you have for the remaining stuff, the visual model that you can use basically to check for visual changes or to check for visual things on the screen. Yeah, but you can always switch between. Yeah, but on default, if you keep it like that, the DOM is the one that is going to take. Yeah, so let's say we would like to uh, click on the login. Click on, oops, login. Cannot type, and that's it. And let's just run the full scenario. Let's do like this. So as you can see, we are starting the scenario. There you go. And then we click on the login. I just said it, it's a login, yeah? And as you can see on the screen here, Magic Inspector was finding sign-in. I didn't call it login because on purpose to see what the a Magic Inspector is doing. So the tool was able to actually recognize that sign-in is the same meaning as for login. And that's the really cool part. And then you can go ahead. So we go back to, to edit mode. Uh, and we can say, oh, one more thing that is really important that I found out as well when I was trying the, the tool is, um, you see this tiny open lock, the freeze test. So in case you, you lock this one, of course you cannot change it in the next run, but the execution then is much faster. So let's, let's see that. So we run the scenario again. So we open up the web page. not sure why this is a bit slow today. So we're running the scenario, the web shop is getting open up and boom, we are already done much faster than before. So let's go back to edit mode. So now that we are on this login page, we fill in something or we just press the login button, right? So then we say, press the login button and we haven't filled anything out. So I, I assume there are little asterisks that we have a required field section. And then let's do like a visual assertion. And we say, okay, we go to the visual uh, AI visual assertion and we say, then I expect to see um, error messages for the missing email and password. That's it. Nothing else that I'm going to, to add here. And then we say run full scenario again. So we are starting the web shop again. We're starting it, not starting it, we are calling it. So we're calling the, the web page. We're clicking the sign in. We're clicking the login button. Now the magic inspector is searching for login, found the login, it's clicking it. And as I mentioned the first time, it takes a bit longer. And now we do the visual search. You see the required fields and then it says, okay, um, it, it has passed and if you check down below the assertion was uh, then I expect an error message to see and yeah it's, it's actually is required and it's giving me some information what has been found here and that's really cool yeah so as you can see with three little steps not not really a lot of a lot of knowledge about the product that I would like to test you get a fade login test and what you can do now is you can also click on the make it reusable. Yeah? If you click it on make reusable, the next time, <clears throat> excuse me, the next time you create a, another test, another test, let's do like this. We go to this shop, we do the create stuff. We can add the plus button here 
and we can enter the import reusable step and then we say go shopping yeah okay that the, that's a bad naming right now but now we are reusing exactly that step and to to just uh, play around with uh, the the fade login scenario right <clears throat> so now let's do some more testing so we are now on the web shop we say um what are, what are we going to say? We say click on the first element, uh, no, click on the first product on the page. Yeah, we do like this. And then we say add, uh, put it to the shopping cart. And between we do some assertions. Let's do like this. Um, we are on the product landing page. So we go to the web shop site, we click on the first element on the page, we check that we are on the product landing page, we put it to the cart, then we can say open the shopping cart and then we say okay one more assertion uh, check that the one element is in the shopping cart okay so let's see if this one works as well as you can see we're just having the the workflow the user journey in mind of the web shop and we're just writing the test cases in an easy way right so we are on the web page now it says click on the first product see first product identified. The tool could also have clicked on the very first element that uh, it has found on the screen, but now it clicked on the first um, element. Now we said we do an AI visual representation and we're checking something on the screen. <clears throat> this happened as well. Now it has found the put it to the shopping cart. So it has identified the add to cart, put it to the cart. Then we said, okay, open shopping cart. It's not nowhere written down. It's just seeing the little tiny icon over there. So we're clicking, that's really cool. We're clicking the shopping cart. And now we are on the, the shopping cart itself. We checked it, boom, done. That's really cool. To be honest, that's that's really fancy. And now that we, we are on the, um, on the steps, we can again lock them. So we lock them, so they're much faster in execution. Oh no, this one not. And we can also say, okay, in this one, uh, open the shopping cart. So in case you turn the AI off on this step, the DOM is basically the, 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 the valid thing. Yeah, Either it uses the CSS selector in that case or coordinates. Yeah? Yeah. So now we can either def also define the coordinates, which the two should click on. Uh, now I click somewhere, which, which step was it? That's completely wrong. Um, so we, we now we have to coordinate as well. So you can have two options, either AI, CSS selector, or I would always recommend to have AI is enabled as a default so that you have basically um, the, the step um, or like the tool doing its magic as it's called to do it and then to find out what's going to happen. Yeah, So that's really cool. And then once you have created some of the tests, you have the overview here where you can say, okay, go shopping. Yes, run the test again. We can also say, okay, uh, let, let's run this one. As you can see, it's now queued. You get a direct an update over here, what's going to happen. So you get a lot of stuff uh, to happen here. You can also duplicate the test. You can edit the test steps again. So in case we click on edit steps, we can, as I mentioned before, we can make it reusable or you can schedule it in a, in a test suite. That's also that you uh, things that you can do. You see, just passed, so cool. Yeah, so that that's basically, it's a really lean, super user-friendly product magic inspector for you to start your test automation for your SaaS web product. And then as you can see here, we have all the suits. The suits, we can have a manual trigger. We can trigger it, of course, on, on a pull request, on a frequent basis from your CI CD system. Uh, you also have the run history available. You can also define variables, which I find is really cool, like secrets. So in case you would like to log into the web shop, you could use like a define your user. In this case, it's called John, it's a default user. You can put a value over here. And if you go to your tests, and let's do this for a second, we go here and let's say we, we, we click on 
the last element or not the last element here we can say um, fill input and then we can either um, go to the variables and then we can see here we use john and then boom we're using the credentials over there super easy yeah uh, what else coming back from the variables is alert settings so you can integrate it to email notifications Slack, or teams and then of course you have a team configuration yeah so you have a lot of stuff that you basically can do easy to to set up yeah what you can also see over here you can check on the the, the link down below you get the roadmap of magic inspector you can get feedback you can create a new request a feature request which is really cool for you to see so you get all the things uh, that that's going to happen uh, in a transparent way so you get the feedback you get the roadmap planning as well you have the change logs as well in place that's really cool uh, what else I wanted to show you is not this one, but this one is the Magic Inspector documentation. That's always what I'm showing to you as well to, to give you an idea like how mature the product is. And as you can see, you get the full guides of, um, of Magic Inspector that you can execute, like how to use CSS selectors, test autocomplete inputs, AI visual assertions as explained, how to test keyboard events in case you would like to do that. So it's really straightforward documented. And I haven't checked the documentation before. I never do that uh, when, I in, when I review new tools because I would like to see if it's really easy to use. And to be honest, yes, Magic Inspector is ticking that boxes. As I said, check the link down below, magicinspector.com. Give the tool a try. It looks really promising. I'm really looking forward to see the progress over the next weeks of the tool. Yeah, and with that, we are coming to an end of this video. Thanks for coming by. Have a great day whenever you're watching the video. And as always, like it, share it, subscribe it to support my channel and see you next time.